And um, I'm very excited today to talk about this very strange manuscript that I have stumbled across in my own research. Uh, I specialize in 16th century Inquisition confessions. And today we're going to look at an 18th century confession to an Inquisition that is unlike any other confession that I've looked at, not only because it's substantially later in a different uh, in Spanish in a different century, um, but for its very bizarre little format. So I'm going to walk us through this document. It's about 10 folios for the next 20 or so minutes. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. I will make sure to save some time at the end to go over those. So this text is called Escrito Curioso, which translated means strange writing. And whoever put the little marking on it that named it Escrito Curioso did so because of this really weird handwriting that we're going to see throughout this text. So right off the bat, the first time that I saw this document, expecting like all of the other documents that surrounded it to find this really horrific 16th century paleography that I have to battle through, I found this beautifully written, completely pristine, clearly well thought out document um, that immediately caught my attention for its actual legibility, that it is like completely seamless to read this first little introduction. So this is a very bizarre document, not only because it is very well written and well constructed, but just for what it actually claims to be. It's basically a literary gift to the Inquisition that some guy in 1754 decided that the last thing he wanted to do with his life was submit a small little anthology of poems to the Inquisition in praise of the Holy Office. So I'm confident that you guys will find this really interesting. So what we're looking here at in this first page is a written confession that goes on for about two folios um, in which he's explaining um, his orthodoxy. He's explaining how much it is his desire to follow the Catholic church to its very, his very end. And he starts up here to those very venerable three holy inquisitors. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the page. And you'll see carefully, this is on paper. And for being only from the like 1750s, it's really not looking in great shape. I've worked on documents from the 1500s that seem to be better hanging in there. Um, so he, this is still continuing his prologue. It, as you can see, it's incredibly neatly printed, um, just pristinely spaced and it's a handwriting that makes me really jealous as I have to turn back to my other sorts of confessions. All right, here we go. Here's our first glimpse into how bizarre this document is. So on the side of the page here, we see a signature, a pristinely printed signature that says Antonio Joseph Maria Guerrero. Um, which is, I mean, it could be his name. I'm personally a fan of a hypothesis that says that this is a pen name because it's so over the top. Antonio is referring to Saint Antonio, who is a patron saint of things that are lost being found. And throughout the text, he talks about how this is a document that's being given to the Inquisition, which will be held secret, but in the hopes that one day it will be found, perhaps by some people interested in weird old manuscripts in the 21st century in Pennsylvania. And then his two middle names are Joseph and Maria, um, the holy parents, and his last name is Guerrero or warrior. Um, both of those terms he uses poetically throughout the work to refer to the orthodoxy of his birth um, and his desire to be a warrior for the faith. On this other side where we have, I, I, words always fail me in trying to describe what's going on here. We've got um, some poetry in Latin. I've termed these basically word art. It makes me feel like it's like 18th century Microsoft word art that he's um, drawing onto this page. It's super well constructed, that heart at the top, the globe at the bottom, um, and these acrostic poems down here on um, second half of the page. This is the first of three what I call these word art pages. Um, and we'll see throughout this that this is incredibly well constructed and well thought out that we have a grand total of three of these word arts and 14 poems that are divided into two sets of seven. 
And in total, we have nine poems in Latin, three in Spanish, and two super strange poems that are written half in Latin and half in Spanish. Um, so he's clearly put a ton of thought into the construction of this little literary package. All right, I'm gonna flip on over. Here he goes, and this is our second one. This is saying in praise and honor of the Holy Inquisition. Um, he's created this amazing little work here, uh, playing off of the Inquisition's own symbolism of the lion and lamb, um, the olive branch and the sword, playing right into, this would be really great Inquisition propaganda. So it's a little bit confusing that it was held in its secret little archives. Uh, we have these nice columns and all of this is um, praises in Latin, I believe. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot going on. These little squiggly lines that are texts. Fantastic. All right, so here we enter into the first set of poems. All right, so he divides them up by different rhythms. And my personal hypothesis is that he's trying to prove that he can write any style of poetry that you throw at him. Um, and so on the right here, we have these elogiums, um, praise to mercy, praise to mercy, elogium to religion and to its institutions. Then acrostic poems. We'll see throughout this um, that a lot of these are very playful that there's lots of like riddles or almost games that he's playing with this language in um, all sorts of decorations. So some decimas here, we've got Spanish here and Spanish here as well. Doministrius is that acrostic and this acrostic is doctis inquisito, so yeah in praise of the Inquisition again. We flip our page. There we go. Carefully, carefully, carefully. Here we are again. Some octavas. And again, just like incredibly well-spaced, incredibly legible um, and often marked. I don't know if it's coming through very clearly, but where he'll underline the first little bit of each poem. Passing on through, through Canvilla. And then here we are again with our third word art. Aren't these insane? There's so much detail in these. I'm sure we'll wanna spend some time digging through. We've got, if we just look at this image here of some sort of bird, can't remember if we discussed in other circumstances if we decided what kind of bird it is. Um, eating at its eating at its own, gaping hole in its chest with something coming through its mouth here. And um, it's riding in its wings. It's, it's just an immense amount of detail. Um, I don't know if it's coming through, but just there's like tiny little strokes. Um, to create this shaded image. Um, and this sort of thing looks, looks like how I used to doodle in high school. <laughs> the whole time, sort of sitting there. Um, and back to a praise of Maria. Yeah, so this one is dedicated to Maria, I believe. Oh, man, this is my first time looking at this in a while and it is just, it's just shocking. Shocking level of detail. Okay, we pass on over here. Now he's writing a cancion in Castilian. Yep. With some more lovely little illustrations here at the bottom. I believe that this is the one in, so this one's back in Latin and an ode, some more just doodles all over the place. 
and we're coming up on my favorite one. I might be rushing through this because I'm really excited. It could be a griffin. Yeah, that looks common symbols of Christ. Love that. Here we are. Okay, I'm gonna flip to my favorite one. This one right here. So we have a sonnet, some sáficos, and then I'm gonna shift us over and see, so right down here at the bottom, this is an amazing game of a poem where it's saying the different ends between uh, for the righteous and for the sinner. Um, my Latin is not particularly strong, <laughs> but what we've been able to determine is that we have this acrostic of finis that actually starts the poem and you have two options where you can read up on the top line and we have letters running through the center that are like mediary acrostics throughout the poem. And each line gives you two alternate endings where you have the path of righteousness and then the path of uh, the center for the path for the righteous and the path for the center. Um, I would love somebody who is really, um, it does look like DNA, you're right, you've got that double helix. Um, I don't, uh, Nick, did we determine if this manuscript has been digitized? Uh, yes, it, 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 act, it has been. It's a little hard to find, um, but it is on pen in hand. I think uh, I have a link. Excellent, um, thank you. I mean, you can get to it through the, the Franklin link that- um, I, Yeah, I already put it. put it in the, I, I'll put it in the chat again. But I have Excellent, the link to, to, the, to the first page in the, Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's within a larger digitized within a larger range of documents. So mm -hmm. um, I think that link that Doc posted is it will take you to the, to the right page. Take you to it. Yeah. No. The detail is definitely worth taking a look at if you have the computer space for it. Um, I would love for somebody who knows Latin better than I do to do some sort of criticism of this poem because I really want to know if it's any good or not. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's a really interesting concept um and but I don't I my impression is that my impression throughout this entire work is that he's going to great lengths to demonstrate erudition to varying degrees of success um and so I think this would be a really fun thing to work on <laughs> amazing um so this is the whole document it's again it's relatively short in the prologue he um laments that he can't make it longer um, but it's clearly a text that's incredibly well thought out um, and super bizarre. Like there's just nothing about this text that, that's what you expect anything submitted to the Inquisition to be, um, at least not from my experience and backing in 16th century Spain. Um, so if it seems good, do we wanna take a little bit of a vote of what we would like to look at in a bit more detail now that we've seen this overview? Any strong opinions? Well, Kelly had a question um, earlier when you were talking. Yeah. She was she was at, wonder, wondering about the circumstances of the writing. Um, would this person be in a kind of house arrest or imprisoned? And if so, he would have had access mm. to pen and paper. So, do you know anything about that? Interesting. So, all I know is what the text says about itself. Um, and so, he is saying that he is on his deathbed and that he is wanting this to be his last um declaration of last confession of fidelity um the research that i was able to do into it like one plausible hypothesis that i have is that this might have accompanied a financial gift to the inquisition that it again taking his own um, narration at face value he claims that he doesn't have children except for the individuals that he has taught and that it is his desire that his inheritance be left to the holy office um, and so there was apparently a practice of if you didn't have um, individuals to inherit your property, you could leave your gift to the holy office. And this, he doesn't mention a financial donation to go with it. Um, but that's my best, my best guess is that this would have been something that he is trying to offer as a last um, demonstration of fidelity to the Inquisition. So Yes, he is 100% incredibly dramatic. 
I have a hard time reading this at face, face value. If you're truly on your, this is really good handwriting for somebody who is truly on their deathbed. Um, it's yeah, it's a, it's a dramatic piece for, for sure. It's also really interesting because um, I work on confessions. And so this doesn't actually work as a confession. It doesn't tell us enough information about who he is. It doesn't tell, tell us where he's from. It doesn't tell us who his parents were. It doesn't tell us, it tells us his name, but again, it's a name that isn't really tied into a specific family line. And so it's hard to trace. And um, he doesn't actually confess any sin. He only confesses orthodoxy. He just says, this is exactly what, I believe exactly what I'm supposed to believe. And I've never deviated from it. And my only complaint in life is that I was too frail of health to go and murder heretics. <laughs> yeah so dramatic is definitely a good description I want to think that it's marketing like that this would serve as really good propaganda and so then the question mm -hmm. comes to who who read it where was it where was it stored the um, introduction talks about it being submitted into the archive like into the inquisition's holds to be kept a secret and lamenting that people won't be able to read it um <laughs> this would make a fantastic story. <laughs> I believe it's up for grabs if somebody wants to create the life of Antonio Guerrero. I would 100% read that book. 100% happily, happily read that. <laughs> Close up of the poetry art. Yes. All right. So we've got this three. I'm going to flip back to we've got Maria and then we have the two at the beginning careful flip careful flip I saw somewhere that paper just got worse might this person read Dante highly probable I mean educated that seems highly probable hmm. what makes uh what makes you think that he would have been engaging with Dante curious Okay, so here's our first. Do we say it might be a griffin? No, it's a pelican. A falcon? I think it's a pelican because of pelican. The, well, is that blood sort of coming? What what is that detail of the, coming from the beak down below? It's the... yeah. I it is like long strings with little. Uh, balls at the end, the tiny little dots at the end. Um, so it doesn't, it looks more like. Um, oh, like seals or bookmarks in the book. Interesting. That could be. I'm trying to see if there, it does go behind the book. Um, I, can't, I don't know. How, what do I identify that as? Blood, maybe, but it's very like there is space between each one of the lines. Like it's not a cohesive, it looks like strandy. What was it coming out of his mouth? See if any of the, you really have to twist your head to read this. We've got key, Cristo, Vitit, Legend, oh, oh, Custodit, Amore. Wrapping around the top of the head here. I was like, I think the text might help us here. I can drop in the chat what it's saying. Again, a pelican piercing its breast. Fascinating. Pelican in her piety. Ah, two great commandments. Yep. Nice. I was saying paper got worse over time. Yep. Yeah, that's super interesting dot. Um, let's see what other details are in here. Yeah, if anybody wants to parse this Latin for me, please feel free. There's just something also about writing in Latin in 1754 in Mexico. Like that's just such a like, 
really? <laughs> like, what are we, what are we doing with this? It's amazing. Oh, it starts dropping into Spanish. So we have Latin here and Latin here. I think. Scripto libro. Yep. And es Dios digno del amor. So God is worthy of love. Es muy digno porque es solo. He is uh, very worthy because he is only because he's one. Es digno porque es Señor, because he is Lord. Único de Polo, Apolo, I don't know what Polo is. No hay otro, there's no other, um, yeah, Lord, Dominator. This is, if, if anybody is interested in uh, the arms and letters, this is a prime example of, of it all throughout that. Um, he's constantly referencing that somehow this will be useful in combating heretics. Uh huh. Connection to the church. He claims to be a lay person. The he describes himself as a teacher, like as a school teacher. Um, the clergy, yeah, could be. Ooh. Sorry. We back on. Oh, we flipped around. Fantastic. Um. All right. Let's see if this decides to flip back. I think I have to undo us slightly. Sorry to get it back to the proper orientation. You should be able to loosen loosen it and then lift your phone up. Mm hmm and then, it, then it should flip yeah if not you could always rotate the document i, I guess but <laughs> <laughs> different ways of different means yeah Let's see here and how do you know how to loosen it um which are you yeah is i guess eric isn't there with you um, yeah i know he bailed yeah, okay. so lift the little little tab on the top to unlock yep. it, and then oh, hi, you're able to pull it apart. <laughs> hi. Hi, Eric. <laughs> and then pull it up. Yeah, I saw you do it, and it made me fear for my life. Okay, oh, yes. You're moving. Oh. We've got movement. We're going to make it. Oh, wait. Here's my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. My students this morning were laughing that it's a very Wednesday Wednesday and I have to. <laughs> it's just, this is more than Wednesday. Falling out of their chair. Like it's just been one of the, there it is. There it is. Like I so got this. Okay. We're out. We're uh, there you go. There Yay. you go. Yeah. <laughs> and we're Good back happen. in. Excellent. There it is. Teamwork. Thank you guys. All yep. right, here we're back in. Uh, Latin, yeah, no, there's clearly something invested in one size of this manuscript um uh it's like a little bit it's it's like a i forget the technical term we talked about this in our manuscript course <laughs> why don't you put your hand just put your hand in so we can see how big it is compared to your Here's hand my hand yeah. bigger than my little hand it's yeah. like a little longer than eight and a half by eleven yeah And Good, Amy, Amy is mm -hmm. asking about the underlining of the acrostic poems, what that's about. Yeah, so it would take me a second to get back into where he decides to underline and why he does that. So yeah, over on this side, um, is this the one that's half? I think this is the one that's half in Spanish and half in Latin. It's octavas. Leyendo mm -hmm, este papel, signum evidence. De mi fe crecida. Oh, I think this is the one that's half and half. Yes, it is. So in this one, he's underlined the Latin. <laughs> like, see, I I can write in Latin. I does, has anybody ever heard of mixing Latin in the vernacular and poetry? That was so foreign to me. A four. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Macarena Carol. Hmm. Middle English examples, fascinating. Super fascinating. Hmm. DS. Mm -hmm. Back to one. So I'm trying to this on um, oh sanctus, yeah. So this is an octava to a to the holy office. Um describing all sorts of fidelity. Hi. Catherine, this is Amy, and I was just wondering, I realized that I didn't know whether the numerical names for these poetic forms refers to numbers of syllables or numbers of lines in a uh, sort of verse. What mm -hmm. For octavas, what's the eight? And can I believe, you ask I, believe, I believe for octavas, it's the syllables. Um, and then can see, yes. Well, count todo el mundo. Re, re, there it might be. I think the, actually the, the columns is the lines. are lines. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the lines. Um, yeah. Decimas. Again, I work on <laughs> 16th century narrative confessions, and so to have to then look at this and you're like, oh, I'm now, I'm now dealing with 18th century poetry. Okay, that's this might be a little shift out of scope for you, but mm -hmm. do you feel like the Inquisition was was noticeably different in the 18th century compared to the period that you- Absolutely, on? absolutely. It must have been. And so um, it must have been. We're also on a different continent, um, facing all sorts of different issues. Um, and so I know that there's work being done on um, how does the Inquisition present itself and how does it change throughout its something like 300, 400 year tenure. Um, and so absolutely, I'm, this is part of what is the shock of this text for me. It's like, this is so different. Like, how do we get from what I'm used to seeing to this? And is this normal? Is this normal? Like, I still have a hard time imagining that this is normal. Um, but yeah, I would need to go spend a lot of times in archives in Mexico, I think, to figure out if we find other examples of things like this. Because maybe, maybe it became a thing. All right, well, we're right on time here. I'm going to double check the chat to see if there's any quick thing that has helpfully plugged the focus on love on the Miss Pelican image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love of God, for sure. For sure. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this super interesting manuscript. It's here in Kislak if you ever want to come take a peek. Um, and it looks like next week, May 4th, may the 4th be with you. Um, we've got manuscripts of Star Wars. That's super fun. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming in and popping to see such an interesting manuscript. Take care, everyone. Thank you all.